Regardless of what 3D printer I've talked about on this channel, there's been one consistent thing throughout all those videos. And that is that somebody, not even somebody, most people, there will be the word Ender 3 somewhere in the comment section at least 20 times. This dude's doing straight! People love the Ender 3. And I, I don't understand it, to be honest. I, I guess I've never had one. That's probably the biggest reason why I don't understand it. I never had an Ender 3. But from the people that I've talked to that have had an Ender 3, it really seems like the price and the customizability of the machine is really the driving force behind the, the cult following for the Ender 3, which they still make. Uh -huh. Like the old OG Ender 3 is, is still something you can buy, which is phenomenal to, to think that's a thing. But like I said, never used one. Everybody loves one. So when Creality reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try the new Ender 3 V3? I said, why not? If everybody really loves that thing so much, if it's really that good, the new one should be just as good and it's definitely worth taking a look at. Now, it's no secret that I am not a huge fan of Creality. I've said this countless times on the channel. I don't really like Creality. And it's not because of their printers per se. Uh, this mostly stems from my experience with the Ender 7. Not that anybody probably remembers that machine. The Ender 7 came and went in the blink of an eye, but I don't dislike Creality because the Ender 7 was bad. I actually like the Ender 7. The problem I have is that the Ender 7 that I had when I tried to install a BL Touch using Creality's instructions on how to do it, the machine bricked itself and using Creality's customer support is rough. And if you go online and look at any reviews of Creality, the biggest thing, the biggest hit they always take is their customer support, which I can attest to. It's not good, and that's why the Ender 7 is still back there dead and probably will always be. But putting all that to the side, I am going to do my very best to look at this printer, the Ender 3 V3, as objectively as possible. And the first thing I did when looking at this printer was try to decide what my expectations were going to be of it before I even got it and tried it. And based on the price point, so this thing is like $279.99 on, like if you go to Micro Center, that's what they'll charge for this thing. So a comparable printer to that and something I use quite often is the A1 Mini from Bamboo Labs. This is a little more expensive, but I feel like if you're in the $250 price range, these two printers are probably a couple printers that you're gonna be looking at trying to decide which one do you wanna get. And again, full disclosure, I know how big of a fanboy I am for, for Bamboo Labs, uh, but again, objective. We're gonna be as, we're gonna be objective in this, in this review. I, at least that's, that's the goal. Now, one of the biggest advantages to using the Ender 3 V3 over something like the A1 Mini is the build volume. The A1 Mini is 180 by 180 by 180, which is actually pretty darn small, to be honest. The Ender 3 V3 is 220 by 220 by 250, so you got quite a bit more space to play with. And it doesn't sound like a lot, 180 to 220, but I can't tell you how many times I've designed something and then went to print it, throw it in the slicer, and then realized that I just need a few more millimeters in X or Y to make it fit. And it's not like it's a deal breaker. You can always go back and design your models to break down into smaller pieces. And even slicers like Bamboo Studios or have ways where you can cut stuff. But having something a bit larger is always beneficial. And another advantage to the Ender 3 V3 is its speed. At least on paper, the Ender 3 V3 can do up to 600 millimeters a second, whereas the A1 Mini can do 500 millimeters a second. Now, if you go into their documentations, it says that the maximum speed that the A1 Mini can achieve is like 10,000 millimeters a second, but if you're, there's no way you're ever gonna achieve that speed on a 180 millimeter build sheet. Uh, that's just wishful thinking. So this one is, at least on paper, slightly faster than the A1 Mini, which is a good thing, and a lot of people would steer towards this because of that. The Ender 3 V3 also has a build surface that can get up to a higher operating temperature. The V3 can get up to 110 C, whereas the A1 Mini is limited to 80 C. Now, if you went to Micro Center's website and you looked at the specs on the Ender 3 V3, you would see that they say it can reach 230C. Oof, that's a bit of a typo on that one. But uh, yeah, 110C on this one, 80C on that one. So again, you got another win for the uh, Creality machine here. This machine is also a Core XZ, which is a first for me. I've never actually used a Core XZ. I've never even seen a Core XZ. Now I have... Core XY machines back here. I've used those in the past. The Ender 7 RIP is a, is a Core XY. Uh, but no, I've never seen a Core XZ. Now, that means you don't need the ball screws that you normally have. Well, not on this one, but on a normal machine of this style, you would have ball screws in the back here. Think like an old Prusa Mark 3S. Uh, you don't have that, which should make the X-axis quicker. 
So there's that. I'm sure there's other benefits to it. Uh, it's just very interesting to, to see this kind of layout. Also, according to reality, these belts should automatically tension, which is good for me because you know I hate messing with uh, 3D printers. I hate fiddling with stuff. And according to them, these should always stay at the proper tension. They should do it all automatically. So just less fiddling you got to do and more time printing. Assembly of the printer is pretty much as easy as it gets. Gone are the days of when I got my Mark 3S or the old TiVo Tarantula Pro where you just get a box of loose parts and they're just like, good luck, dude. Here's a YouTube video, see if you can put it together. Most stuff now, like this thing comes basically assembled. Uh, this thing comes in two pieces and you just attach the gantry to the bottom or the base and you're pretty much good to go once you plug things in. Now I did notice that the gantry is a bit wobbly uh, when it's not connected to everything, which was a bit sus to me, especially when their documentation says new gantry design makes it less wobbly. It was very wobbly. But once you got it all screwed and attached to the machine, it's pretty rigid, so I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. It was just kind of, it was very, just kind of weird to say the least. And after getting the Ender 3 V3 up and running and printing some of the preloaded and sliced uh, parts on the machine, I was actually pretty impressed. The printer itself prints pretty darn fast. Um, for at least a bed slinger type printer, it, it was respectable. And all the prints were pretty darn good quality, if I'm going to be honest. But one thing I did notice right out of the gate when I started printing this thing, I could probably just make it do it now, is the tube setup on this head is set in front of this crossbar in the gantry here. And when the machine runs its, you know, automatic homing sequence, it goes all the way to the top and it just kind of crushes this thing down. And although it wasn't an issue for me in printing, I never ran into an issue where it broke filament or did anything like that. I would expect when your filament gets quite old, kind of like this stuff over here. Oh. This stuff has been just sitting around for quite a long time, but when you get some of this old filament in that machine and then the gantry smashes it, it's just gonna snap it and you're gonna have some failed prints, uh, which is a bummer. The next thing I wanted to try was, you know, something a bit larger. So I found one of these cool Millennium Falcon Star Wars things. It was kind of one of those suspended ships with all those weird filaments that come in that I thought was really cool. So I made one, well, I didn't make one. I downloaded the STL model and I scaled it to kind of be the size of the build plate and I, I started it up. And after making sure everything was, you know, running smoothly, I went to bed because it was late at night. And the next morning I came downstairs. Oh my God! And yeah, it failed. And to be honest, I don't even know why this failed because it just kind of, it didn't come unstuck from the build plate. It just looked like it got to this layer height and just said, yeah, I'm done. This is, this is as far as I want to take it. So it was just baffling to me. I just chalked it up as a slicer glitch. It's the only thing I can think of. So I... Got the same model, I scaled it down so it fit on both the A1 Mini and the Corality Ender 3 V3, and I started it again. And again, it was late at night, so I went upstairs and then went to bed. The next morning, I came back down to the basement full of hope and way too much confidence. <gasps> no, 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 no. Yeah, it happened again. And it almost happened in the exact same spot. It's kind of weird. I mean, these are different sizes, yes, but they pretty much stopped in the exact same spot for again, no reason, like didn't come unstuck. The machine was just still chugging along, making spaghetti. I don't know exactly what happened at all. At this point, I was getting a little bit upset. The the Ender or the A1 Mini obviously nailed it. This, this came out perfect. There was no issue with this thing. Start it, forget it, come back the next day. You have a finished model. But rather than start tinkering with the printer, which is something, like I said, I don't like to do, I just chalked it up as some weird anomaly with that specific model, for whatever reason. The, the Creality hates Star Wars. That's it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So I decided to try a different model and I picked out this simple vase that I downloaded, again, just the STL file from Maker World, and I set it up on both printers. I hit go and the A1 Mini obviously knocked it out of the park. This thing looks beautiful, other than the finger that broke and I, I did that, I, I dropped it while looking at it because why wouldn't I? But this thing, this thing killed it. This thing, on the other hand, hadn't even started. The Creality machine just kind of had a position error, and the, the head was just kind of floating in the in the front here, and that's that's all it said. So I just reset it. It went through the homing sequence. It went to the front. I got a position error, and at this point, I was getting pretty full of rage. Now I should say I know that some people don't mind tinkering with 3D printers. For them, that is the 3D printing hobby. It's what can they do to make this machine just that much better? What can they tinker with? What can they improve? What can they change? I'm not one of those people. 
To me, a 3D printer is an appliance. I bought this thing to make stuff. I want to tell it what stuff I want, and I want to walk away and come back the next day to new stuff. To me, a 3D printer is kind of like a microwave. I want to put popcorn in the microwave and know that in like five minutes, I'm going to have popcorn. I don't want to put popcorn in the microwave and then 30 seconds it catches on fire. That's just, that's just a shitty microwave. But not wanting to give up, I decided I would try yet another design. Maybe it didn't like the vase. The vase was too easy. So I printed, I decided to pick this little bendy dragon and I put them both on each machine because this one actually fit. Uh, I hit print and it actually worked out great. They came off perfect. Like the A1 Mini, again, knocked out of the park. Who thought it would do anything different? And, but the reality this time, it started printing, which is a plus, and the thing came out flawlessly other than this brim that it decided to put all around, around the outside, or, which is something I could have just turned off, but I didn't. I just left it at default settings. So this is, not a, this is not a big deal. I can just break this off. The dragon itself looks great. It all flexes perfectly. The print quality when printing is actually pretty darn good. So dragon plus. So with a new lease on life for my dragon experience, I wanted to do this vase one more time. So I, I re-sliced it thinking, again, glitch in the, in the matrix is why it didn't work. Sliced the new model up, hit print, watched it start this time. So I did see the head go through its homing sequence. It went to the front, didn't give me the position error, started printing. And I was like, yes, we're, we're all good to go. And that excitement lasted. Yeah, it did, it did this. I don't, at this point, like this wasn't a glitch in the, the matrix because the, the nozzle got jammed up for whatever reason. And at, at that point I, I gave up, I, I, I was done with this thing. I think this experience hurt more than most because I wanted this thing, I wanted it to do good because I know everybody loves the old Ender 3. This is a new one that's supposed to be better and I wanted this thing to be good. And when it does print, it prints well. There's no doubt about it. It prints quicker than this thing. I think it finished the Dragon much quicker than the A1 Mini. Even the quality is just about the same. I mean, these things, I mean, okay, maybe the A1's a little better, but th this is not bad. And I'm not saying this isn't a good machine. Like I said, it prints good when it prints, but I think the biggest issue with this machine is the software, the, the Creality Slicer. It just kind of sucks. I mean, that is the only thing I can think of other than the the jamming issue that happened at the very end. That's why none of this stuff printed. Like what, what is, what is this? Does this, it just seems like a slicer issue to me rather than a, a machine issue. Again, other than the jam. Like I said, to me, a printer is an appliance. It's a tool. It's something I use to create other things. I don't want to be worrying about, is it going to start the print that I sent to it? If it does start the print I sent to it, is it going to finish or is it going to do something weird? I just want to say printer go over there and live and, make the things I send you, don't cause me problems. Now, to be fair, I don't know for certain if the software is to blame for all the issues I had. Obviously the jam isn't the software's fault. It looked like it was actually gonna do a good job at that point. But it seemed like the slicer was giving me issues. Like, look, this, they stopped at the same exact position, which is suspect in and of itself, even though I re-sliced these. I even resized them. They never came unstuck from the build plate. This thing, when I tried to print it three other times, failed because of a position error, which is weird. And then I re-sliced it and it got the same failure. And then eventually I re-sliced it again and sent it over the Wi-Fi rather than plugging a direct USB in. And it started, then it jammed on me just to spite me. So I just think it's a software. I don't know for sure. I know the software, the Creality Slice doesn't seem as good as the Bamboo Studio. And it definitely doesn't seem to perform as good as the Bamboo Studio. The printer is pretty good. But that being said, you can have the best printer on the planet and that the software that backs it up is trash, then the system itself is going to be trash. So I would say if you're someone like me who wants to get into 3D printing and you're not interested in messing around with 3D printers, you just want to use the printer to make stuff for yourself, get the Bamboo A1 Mini. Get any of the Bamboo printers. They all print just the same. It just kind of comes down to what feature sets do you want, how big of a build surface do you want, and what price do you want to pay. And regardless of what printer you pick, they're all gonna do a good job. And Bamboo Studio is pretty dialed in at this point. But you know, if you're someone who likes to tinker with 3D printers, which I will never understand, but there are people out there that is the hobby for them. They wanna make things better. They wanna to try to tinker and mess around with stuff. This might be the printer for you. It's well built, it's relatively cheap, it's packed with features. It runs on an open source based Clipper software. I mean, the value seems to be there. 
And when it does print, it prints really well. It's just the when part that sucks.